Hi, we're right now with Max, the legendary, <laughs> the natural, the only one. How are you right now, Max? Uh, I will say you good day, but I think that down there in Kiev, or up there in Kiev, I'm not sure, it's night. Here in Kiev, we say, Dobry Vecher, Baruski. I want to speak Russian a little bit, not Ukrainian. But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling fine, man. I'm feeling sick. I just wrapped up work. That was the last stuff I had to do before hopping this uh, interview. Uh, been doing an awesome photo shoot, hot girls, good hustle, inspirational messages by all the RSD fans. Life is good these days, man. Where are you based again? Where was that? Where did you say? I'm right now in Mexico City. Wow, dude, that's crazy. What time is it over there? Like seven hours? Uh, here is 1.30 p.m. I think eight hours. Yeah. Eight hours? Eight hours. Awesome. So you're literally like in the future right now for us. <laughs> I'm in the fucking future, yeah, man. It's a good way to it. Uh, it's amazing having you with us today. Um, since the natural, I think that you have done an incredible work, like... I've been in following all the pickup stuff for some years by now, and I think that in the past there was like this old school game that have been evolving. And actually, I don't know what you think about this, but it's like there is a, a thesis with the old game, then there is like the antithesis with a new game, and with the natural, I could say that you do, did like the synthesis. Uh, fusion is actually the best thing of the old school game and the best thing of the new, more behavioral game. What do you think about this? Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it always depends on where the community is as a whole. Mm -hmm. Back in the days, the POA community, like I'm talking about like the very emergence of game, like the mystery method, you know, the game, the book, it was literally like the weirdest weird fuck of nerds that wanted to, to have tricks on how to fuck girls, which is all right. It's evolution. Like any idea of humankind, like any business idea, it goes through processes and it gets better and more natural and more adaptable, right? Of course. Um, so while I do think like this, the type of game that we're teaching with RSD is, is very awesome because it's based on far more natural, it's based on far more self-development, getting to know yourself instead of just relying on canned material. At the same time, I do think it was necessary for the community and for people in general to go through this phase, because otherwise we would have never found out. And dude, ask me in 10 years again, we will look back to the game that we've been teaching here and be like, oh, look at this, it was so weird, you know? <laughs> it's always under constant evolution, and overall, I don't even think about that. Like, what's the thesis? What's the antithesis? All I'm trying to do is go out, have as much fun as possible, spread as much, as much love as possible, and uh, share my ideas along the way. Of and I course. think if everybody focuses on that, we're really well off as a community, you know? No, you, I think uh, you're doing an amazing work, like getting the game to the next level. And as you say, we don't know what the fuck is going to be happening in 10 years from now. <laughs> It's gonna be like telekinetic game by by then. Yeah, yeah. I think as of right now, if you look at my latest content, it's heavily based on social media game as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely the future. Like a lot of digital stuff going on. Of course. Uh, right now, I want to ask you a little bit more about your life and how you were before game, like since high school and. Be, before your big transformation and which were like the main points that actually create leverage in your life that you say right now I'm feeling so much pain that I need to change this I need to to stop being what I'm right now and like I, I like to say I need to kill the boy so the man can be born <laughs> yeah I mean a couple ideas about that first of all um, we always say the the, uh, the biggest enemy of really good is pretty good, you know? So when I look at all my friends from high school who had decent success with girls, you know, they had a girlfriend and shit like that, and I had none of that, and I was sad and depressed and confused. And because I wasn't pretty good with girls, but because I was super shitty, 
I became really good with girls, right? Because it created that leverage on me. Mm -hmm. Where I got so angry at myself, so frustrated. I hit it. I hit such a low point where I started saying, you know what? Fuck! I need to change. You know, none of my regularly popular friends had that thought because they were doing all right. Of course. You know, so they never had pressure put on themselves. And the, excuse me. And the other thing, like you said, kill the boy, right? Pickup is a, is a rite of passage because it's not like. You learn a couple pickup lines and then you fuck girls. Of course. It's more like you think that and then you go out and then you get rejected. And then one girl works and then she flakes on you and then you get rejected again and then you have sex with that girl and then there's drama and then you get a girlfriend and there's drama and then you get multiple girlfriends and you have to go through so much shit and then there's other guys trying to steal your girls, right? And there's logistical mistakes and you just learn how to fucking man up. You learn how to be sharp. You learn how to be witty. You learn how to grow the fuck up. Mm -hmm. You learn how to man up. Cause game is like a monster. It's like a powerful monster in your backyard. It can destroy your whole life. It can ruin you. It can it can push you down to the floor, to the ground. Or if you learn how to work with it, if you learn how to tame it, it can become your greatest ally. It can it can you can ride on the back of game into the sunset, into an epic life. So you either man up and make game one of your greatest allies and you have a hell of a good time, mm -hmm. or you drown of course. and you're depressed. And then I see you on puahate.com. <laughs> Actually, that exists, puahate.com. <laughs> oh, I heard it, yeah, I heard it. <laughs> okay, I want to ask you, uh, some weeks ago I interviewed one of your friends, uh, Mario Tomic, an amazing person also. And we were talking a, a lot about habits and behaviors. <laughs> uh, what do you think that are like the three main habits that you needed to like make your own to all, uh, actually start uh -huh. making changes? Um, it depends on where you want to go, right? Mm -hmm. the, those habits will be different for someone who wants to make, become a millionaire in business as opposed to someone who wants to get bodybuilder fit, right? But I think, let me try to generalize it as much as possible, so. I like to hear I'm, like, in your life uh, in general more than for everyone else. <laughs> in my life, you mean, or? Yeah, what do you think that are like, your three main habits that you think are the more, most important habits for your lifestyle and the things that you have achieved? Okay, for more lifestyle as of right now, I would say health. That includes getting enough sleep. That includes exercising. That includes healthy eating. That includes healthy mind, which means meditation and positive thinking and constant reevaluation of your worldview. And that also includes, did I say enough sleep already? So all these things are extremely important. While at the same time, uh, so that's one habit. That's all health. Uh, the other habit for me personally is documentation, which means getting your ass on social media, documenting everything, posting up to 20 minutes a day just on Snapchat and Instagram stories alone. Um, systemization, trying to delegate as much as possible so I can crack out content, content, content over and over again. Um, and I think the third one is social. Being social, talking to girls, not ending up alone in your little uh, in your little apartment, fully devoting yourself to the hustle. You need to go out. You need to talk to people. You need to network. You need to get to know people. You need to help people out. You need to connect people together because that nobody climbs the top alone. Of course, you can be as good as as highly motivated as you want. You can be as gifted as you want. You can be as crazy in terms of work ethic as you want. If you can't figure out how to work together with people. If you can't figure out how to ask for help and in turn give a lot of value back, you're never gonna make it. Of course, nice, amazing. <laughs> Now, uh, I want to talk more about game, but before I would like to go a little bit more like into the knowledge, if you will, <laughs> talk. And I want to ask you, Max, which do you think that is your, like, your main um, hero? Like, 
someone that, that you say when I was younger, when, when you were younger, you could say like, I want to aspire to be like him and that have uh, inspired you through all this way. Who inspired me when I was younger? Is that what you want to say? Yeah, easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, there, there's been a couple people, like, it always changed. Uh, as an Austrian, I got to say Arnold Schwarzenegger, just the fact that <laughs> he was living in a tiny fucking village, mm -hmm. and uh, he became one of the most famous people in the world. Like, he became a world star. Mm -hmm. And it all started with a ridiculous dream, and then he just followed up on it. That's really awesome. But later on, it obviously became the RSD instructors, you know, Tyler, Julian, Todd, Jeff B. Mm -hmm. I watched all their shit. And I have to say, it always changes, and I think it should change. Like, whatever your hero is, you will realize those are only people. They're full of flaws. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to 100% copy these people, you'll never get your own way. You'll never find out about yourself, and it will just suck. So you need to, you need to take the best values, the best lessons for one specific thing from a person, incorporate it into your own personality, then move on and take more, right? So... I'll take Eckhart Tolle in terms of being present, chill, relax, meditation. I'm not going to sit on a bench for three years like he did, he did but I take the best lessons from him. I take uh, Steve Jobs out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, from him, I would take uh, how to fully own your personality, how to just be yourself. Don't give a fuck about what others think. Does that mean I'm going to start building computers now? does not mean that. I'll just pick out the best parts that help me on my journey where I am right now. And that could change in a month from now. That could change in a week from now. You know, I'll be like, oh, actually, let me learn more about investing. So I'll take all the habits from Robert Kiyosaki, right? Mm -hmm. the, the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yeah, of course. Yo, can you be a little quiet? I'm trying to do a live stream here. And uh, so you just take all these things together mm -hmm. and you build your own arsenal of inspiring people. That's what you basically got to do. Nice. Again, like, I know that you're not saying like thesis and antithesis, antithesis, but you do like your own synthesis of all the good things and you become like that integrated superhuman, <laughs> if you will. Um, I want to ask you, we, we all know that you like to read a lot and that you're like constantly growing smarter and with more knowledge. Which do you think that is your favorite book or the book that have had the most impact in your life? Um, geez, man. <laughs> Again, like there's a lot. Okay. Like, like right now, um, I'm uh, I'm reading, like I said, Robert Kiyosaki, The Rich Dad Guides to Investment. I'm also reading Robert Greene, um, Mastery. Amazing. I'm reading yeah. a lot. Of I'm reading a lot of books. Like, here's what I do. I, I try to start four to five books, and I constantly circulate through them. So when I'm in the mood of, oh, I want to be inspired by a biography, boom, I pop the biography. When I'm in the mood of analytics numbers, boom, I'm going to read the book about uh, investment. When, I'm about, when I want to read about the book of personal development or in, on relationships, I constantly switch between these, all these books. So I would never pin it down to one book. I would say, yo, in general, you need to learn how to fucking read books. You should read at least one book a week. Now, an easy fucking thing to do mm -hmm. for me is because I'm really slow at reading. I would never read a whole fucking book. It, it would take me like a year to read one fucking book. So I came across Audible. And by, I'm not even getting paid by Audible to say that. I should, though. Um, <laughs> Audible is an app where you buy the fucking book for 10 bucks, mm -hmm. which is so fucking cheap compared to the value you get out of that. And you can play it as audio and you can speed it up. So instead of read, instead of listening to it to, through regular speed, I'm reading through it in fucking double the speed. And uh, so instead of, and, 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 and like on my way to the gym, which is a 30 minute walk, I listen to an audio book, which means I get 30 minutes of audio book listening in, but if I, listening, if I listen to it on double the speed, I get an hour of audio book speed in, just by walking to the gym, on my way back from the gym, which is another 30 minutes, but since I listen to it at double speed, I get another hour in, so I'm getting two fucking hours in per day, and I haven't even looked at a fucking book. I just do it while I'm walking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. No, that, I think that's, that's an amazing tip, advice, and <laughs> everything. The next question is, what do you think about uh, another pickup methods? Because 
taking a little bit of the idea of actually also Robert Greene in this book, The Art of Seduction, he talks about all these different kind of pickups, the the rake, the mermaid, uh, the etc etc. And in the pickup world, I know that there are a lot of different types that Ibna pickup, uh, NLP sexual enhancement, the method of the rake and being a misogynist, the mystery method that is like one of the most known methods from old school. And actually know that the natural take this part of being like natural, of being, <laughs> of not more the things you do, but the thing you are in your core. But I like to know what, what is your opinion um, about these other methods that exist in the pickup world? Um, I'm always surprised by how much people know about pickup. Like they know way more than me. Like. Mm -hmm. Half of the stuff you told me, I've never heard. <laughs> Even though I'm supposed to be the expert. Yo, I'm too busy to have an opinion. I always say there's two kinds of people. There's people who have an opinion and there's people who get shit done. Mm -hmm. I want to be on the side of people who get shit done. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. fuck opinions, man. Other people waste their time, their precious time, and their precious energy of like, hmm, what do I think about this person? What do I think about Donald Trump? Yo, you you keep sitting in your fucking corner and think about Donald Trump. I'm going to crush it. I'm going to have hot girls, fucking money, knowledge, good friends, travel, experiences. But you go ahead and jerk off on your opinion, you know? <laughs> Yo, like, 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 it's okay to have an opinion about certain things, mm -hmm. but if you if you find yourself with an over with with, with a with an unnaturally mm -hmm. high amount of opinion, and an unnaturally low amount of results, then you need where you then you know what you need to drop, and you know what you need to definitely increase. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> nice. Actually, I I think <laughs> you didn't answer my question, but you answer it <laughs> at the same I time. Mean, you, know, you know, like uh, it's uh, like uh, saying I really don't give a fuck about the other people. I give a fuck about the shit I'm doing now, and. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. You know, I have a finite amount of fucks to give per day, mm -hmm. and I'm making sure that all these fucks will give me more results or at least more learning. You know, I'm not saying fuck all these other techniques; they're not working. I'm saying I figured out a way how it works for me. I figured out a way how to teach it to my clients, mm -hmm. to the people who follow RSD, and uh, and that's awesome. I'm super happy about that. And if I change my opinion. If I have to incorporate new things into my game, like right now I'm incorporating social media, mm -hmm. I can rewire that and I can find another way to teach that, right? So my it, it always gets continuously better. Of course. No. But I always I always want to make sure that it's tested, that I've gone through it, you know, that I've did trial and error and stuff like that. Amazing. <laughs> uh I want to ask you right now, talking a little bit more about behavior and getting back into game. What do you think that is like the main behavior of the natural? Like the three main things that the natural can live without that three traits of behavior. Okay. I would say number one, personal boundaries. So if a person is in the natural life who stops being value giving, who stops being full of love, who starts being manipulative, who starts trying to leech from you, who starts being a very negative influence on your life, mm -hmm. then the natural has those personal boundaries and says, hey, it was super nice hanging out with you for the time it worked out, but now you gotta go, or now I gotta go. So the natural doesn't take shit from other people. He's not trying to teach them, he's not trying to be a dick back, he simply says, yo, this, is, this doesn't work out anymore, I wish you all the best, much love, and we gotta go separate ways now. That's one thing. Because I see so many guys in, how do you say, in, in extremely uh, manipulative, extremely poisonous relationships because they don't have any personal boundaries. Okay. That also makes the way more attractive to the opposite sex. I would say the number two characteristic is going for what they want. Mm -hmm. A naturally attractive person or a naturally successful person for that matter doesn't wait for shit to come. He doesn't wait for a perfect girl to run, in, to run into him at the corner of the library. He doesn't wait for the million dollar idea. He works on it every fucking day. 
every fucking day. Fortune favors the bold. You need to be bold. You need to be bold, not bold. <laughs> <laughs> you, need to be bold. you need to go for shit. And the more, like, you know, like, what do you say, like, uh, luck meets opportunity, right? That's number two. You need to take action. You need to go for what you want. You want to have a six pack? Get your ass to the gym. Get the fucking throw away that burger in your mouth. You want to have the hottest girl? Better learn how to approach over and over again. You want to make a million dollars? Better read a fuck ton of books about that and build a business. Fail over and over again. Which brings me to the last point. The natural isn't afraid of failing. He's not afraid of getting rejected. He's not afraid of getting hurt. He's not afraid of what other people might think about him. He goes his way. He believes in himself. He believes that he can make it. If he just keeps at it, if he just keeps standing up, getting back up after falling down. Amazing. And I think that what you just have said is so important. The first thing, uh, the thing of the boundaries, I think it's, it's freaking uh, like fundamental, you know. I've been there, I've seen so much people. I'm not a PUA or um, this kind of coach. I also work with people and do a lot of coaching. And it's something like, so many fucking times you just see people saying like hey there is so my friends are not doing this my friends are driving me over here my friends don't want to do game with me and i think that's my personal <laughs> my personal one and you just say it. it's like saying fuck off okay i'm not gonna go against them let them flow let them take your their own curse but like you said like going in your way and saying being sorry maybe not sorry but accepting the way of other people and dude that's amazing max thanks for that <laughs> um i want to ask you now what um what is your main goal or what is the main thing that you want to share to the world oh man If you could give a I just want people to, to society. Get <laughs> That's all I want. I want people to get laid, man. <laughs> people are so angry. They're criminals. They start war because they don't get laid. <laughs> I think if everybody had a proper game and be open with their sexuality and people would fuck left and right, I think that's where people would be happy. You can think about that whatever you want. You can say I'm a dick. I'm an arrogant <laughs> asshole. I'm narrow-minded because it's not only about sex. Of course it's not only about sex. <laughs> But a lot of things we do, we try to suppress our own sexuality, and that, I think that's a big mistake we've been working on as collectively as humanity. If, you are, if you're totally cool with your sexuality, and everybody can be totally cool with their sexuality, and there's no sexual shaming, I think there's going to be a way better world for girls, as well as a way better world for, for men. Nice. That's beautiful. <laughs> Almost <laughs> poetry. No, actually, I like... <laughs> Uh, I, I, I think you talked about that in the natural, in this first part when you say that, dude, boys have a penis, girls have vaginas, and we enjoy playing with them. Why That's do we true. need to have so mo much fucking defenses can come from? Whatever you want to say they come from, but you just say that that will solve, like, world worldwide problems if people just get more laid and stop <laughs> fucking around um, exactly <laughs> uh, I, I want to ask you before this interview I went to some PUA forums and to ask some of your fans some people around what they would like to know about you I, I got some pretty pretty strange questions but also some good ones Get the strange question. Let's go. <laughs> so one one that actually I didn't plan to ask you, but I think it will be interesting, is from a guy AJ from Barcelona. He asks Max, I have a huge problem. Game have changed my life, but since I am 14 years old, my hands sweat a lot. They they sweat like oceans. And that makes me get into my head and get a little bit crazy and insecure. What is your advice for me? Um, I would say, do you know that one person that always also sweats like a really fucking disgusting? And then he will say, no, I don't. And I'm say, me. Mm -hmm. I sweat like really hardcore. 
-hmm. You can do two choices. You could say, oh yeah, that's that's too much of a handicap. I give up and cry about it on the internet, or I take it for what it is because I can't change it and I go the fuck out. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> Now, then we have a question from Abdul from Philippines. He says, uh, Max, I, I see that you have a lot of game and that you are a master in game, but now I can also see that you're a master in business and marketing. What is your best advice for my business game? So I can oh. go up. Okay. I First of all, I, I, I never consider myself as a master in anything. Um, okay. All I'm considering myself is I'm observant. Mm -hmm. I watch and I learn. That's, that's all I do. Mm -hmm. So in terms of marketing, I looked at the biggest people. I looked at what works for them. I looked at my own behavior while I would watch their Instagram, their Snapchat, while I would read their ads. Why am I reading that ad? Why am I not clicking away? because of this, because it's interesting, because of that picture, because of that GIF or GIF, because of that link, because of this proposition. I learn from it and I'm like, let's use that for fearless. Let's use that for the natural. Like whenever I create a program, I start gathering marketing stuff that I observe from other people. Even if I, it doesn't matter if I buy their shit or not, I gather stuff in a big notepad. I write it the fuck down. So all my social media, Everything you see on my Instagram, on my YouTube, on my Facebook, it's just stuff I learned from, from people that I watch. Like, holy shit, I love how Ty Lopez always has hot girls in his background. <laughs> Started doing the same. I love that, that animation with Gary Vee. I love how he replies to everyone. Mm -hmm. Started doing the same. That's all, yo. Fucking learn, experiment around. You know? Social media is so big these days. Follow the guys, look at your own behavior, and see why it works. And, um,. Obviously, I have a great team as well. Mm -hmm. I have an amazing marketing team. I have an amazing cinematographer team. Uh, it's not just me. Always be aware of that. I'm just the guy in front of the camera. There's almost a hundred people behind the camera. Of course. And nice. I have the last question. And I found this one really interesting because I think that actually when I read it, I, I was thinking about a really uh, a pretty similar question. And it's... All this thing of game is about, in big part, not just, but getting late. How can you continue um, practicing it and having like the game or the natural behavior when you are getting into a relationship, when you become, when, where you become like mono, how you say, instead of having a lot of sexual partners, you're just having one? Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't agree that game is just about getting laid. Mm -hmm. I think that's how everybody starts, right? That's yeah. how a young boy starts, <laughs> like, yo, fucking laid. So he types in how to bigger girls, right? Mm -hmm. If you actually look at our content, like, I just posted on Instagram, uh, I'm gonna post after, after this uh, interview, uh, stuff about business, stuff about mental attitude, stuff about health. Mm -hmm. So I think all these things are instead of scarcity. You learn how to understand women and their emotions. You learn how to understand your own emotions. You learn how to cope with your own jealousy, with your own envy. You learn how to grow together. You just learn so many fucking things that are so beneficial for having uh, a healthy, non-manipulative, side-by-side -side growing, and a hell of a sexy relationship. I think if you know game, if you know how to pick up girls and get laid, All the lessons that come along with it are 100% applicable for an epic relationship. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> And for an epic life. <laughs> And for an epic life. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I wanted to do one more question. This is, sure. this is pretty funny. I don't know if it's funny, strange, awkward, or just normal, but who is your best friend? And why do you consider he... Hey. You'll say he's your best friend. Oh, I don't know, man. I got a lot of really good friends. Like, I got best friends that I talk to once a month, that I hang out with once a year. I got best friends with me right here, right now. My team, I always try to, to be friends with them and have a good time and not... I mean, I'm, we're hustling hard as well, and I can be a total dick. But at the same time, I'm trying to be friends. 
Um, right now, I'm hanging a lot, out a lot with my business partner, Kevin. Um, he was always, he was one of my very first wingmen. We've gone through a lot of shit together. We're very open about, uh, you know, certain problems that we might not discuss with anybody else. So, yeah, my dad's a good friend. Tyler is a really good friend. Julian's a really good friend. Jeff is a really good friend. I've been messaging him earlier just before this. Have a lot of friends, man. Have a lot of really good friends. Learn from them. Have them learn from you. Give each other value. <laughs> and also be best friend with yourself, yo. Be aware that in all that hustling, all that rejection, don't forget about you. Don't forget about the boy inside. You don't want to hustle yourself to death. You don't want to hate yourself mm -hmm. because you're not having the results yet. You want to nurture yourself. You want to treat yourself like you treat your own little son. You need to take a time off? Take some fucking time off. You want to go for something? Go get the fucking girl. You want to positively mentor yourself own, mm -hmm. in your own words, in your own brain. Go ahead and do that. That's that's my very non-specific answer. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you didn't answer me, but you answered me actually. Yeah, so uh, I guess like that's what we do at RSD. We kind of talk around about shit. <laughs> With, <laughs> like, uh, yo, you know, if it was that easy to just give you one answer, I would. But there's so many things that you gotta put into context. So. All in all, I want you to figure shit out. I want everybody listening listening to you, mm -hmm. but everybody listening to me, to go figure their things out. Take a couple of things, a couple of gold nuggets from what we say, mm -hmm. and, and, and be inspired to find your own truths. Be like, that's a cool opinion, let me try that, let me see how that works, right? To get back to that, what I said earlier, who's the most uh, inspirational person for me, and I say like, take, take stuff from everybody. Figure shit out, like if I would just give you one answer, you would have that one answer in your brain. You wouldn't learn how to rethink things. You wouldn't learn how to think on your own. How to think on your own terms. It would be like giving you the fish versus teaching you how to fish. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And that again didn't answer your question, but whatever. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no! It's amazing. I actually would like to be a, a little bit more in disagree with you to cause this interview tension about I don't think the same, you know, but. Actually, I agree a lot with what you say. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I what you said just uh, get me to think about a uh, experience I just had working with some guys, some scientists with doctorate, forty years old guys who tell me like my my dad just like passed away. I am a science man, so I don't believe in religion. I don't believe in politicians. I don't follow any like creed what who do, do the fuck i i should follow and you just answer his question it's like follow yourself dude <laughs> stop being like trying to search someone to follow yeah i mean Find i mean for whoever whoever person that is the father passed away i always think that's you know my condolences it's always harsh yeah but at the end of the day this shit happens you know mm -hmm. at the end of the day i you, you you can like it doesn't matter if it's a, the death of a loved one doesn't matter if it's a harsh breakup you can do two things you can be all victim about it and and be like oh everybody's out to get me it's unfair this guy's dad is still alive or you can see it as the universe testing you mm -hmm. karma saying let's put this guy through a little bit of shit so he can either lose and drown in self-pity or he can come out even fucking stronger mm -hmm. at the end of the day yo don't ever lose the lesson doesn't matter how much of a bitch your ex-girlfriend was how much she broke your heart how many of your friends she fucked how much of your life she ruined at the end of the day she's something that was sent by karma that was sent by a random event in the universe if you're a science guy to make you grow to make you slap wake the fuck up and get yourself on the next fucking level. After every breakup I've had, after every loss, after every time me losing, failing, I was down for a day, a couple hours, a couple weeks. But after that, I always came out so much fucking stronger. And, and I think that's a good mindset to have. Nice. Um, and to finish this, uh, <laughs> I want to ask you, what is the next step in your trajectory? You done the natural, you're an RSD instructor, you've done fearless. 
What's the next thing? Like becoming a god? <laughs> <laughs> the apotheosis, how they say in ancient Greek. I'm trying to get that word tattooed, apotheosis. It's the ascension of a mortal human up to the gods. But that's not what happened. <laughs> like, just a tattoo. Um, people think like now that the next program is out and it, it uh, temporarily actually outsold the natural and now it's kind of close to the natural, which is really awesome. Mm-hmm. Like what's now? Like yo, I'm not even close to stopping. I'm taking all the money that I'm getting in and I'm investing it. I'm investing it in more people, more uh, people that can help me bust out content. I'm gonna bust out even more content. Growth, 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 growth. I'm not even close to done. I'm just starting out. That being said, I have a couple programs in my head. Maybe a social media program. Maybe a relationship program. Maybe a program on verbal game. I have a lot of cool programs coming up, a lots of good free stuff coming up on Facebook and Instagram, on Snapchat and Instagram stories, on Twitter, on YouTube. A lot of really great stuff and I'm happy to be in a position where I can do that. So that's my fucking plan. Amazing. Um, by that I think that we, we can um, end for today. I, I like this this part is also carnival if you don't <laughs> to make it three awkward questions that I got in the, the questions okay the sure, first one good. it says Max I love the Fifty Shades of Max book it's lovely <laughs> I like to ask you when did you lose your virginity like at zero <laughs> or before born. <laughs> No, actually, that's not the question. My question is, how or which were your limiting beliefs that you have be- before becoming a pickup artist, and what are your empowering beliefs that you have right now? I'm gonna tell you the single most important okay belief that I had. Okay, because all the other answers I kind of not answer, but this one I can be a very specific one. Biggest limiting belief that I used to have was, some guys have it, some guys don't. Mm-hmm. You know, some guys are good with girls, they're just actually good with girls, some guys don't, and I'm on the side of not having it. I'm mm-hmm. the guy who's just not good with girls. But when I started to pick up, I realized like, you can change. You can go from, I'm the guy who doesn't have it to, I am the fucking guy who has it. And that limiting belief, having that destroyed, changed my life. Because then, I started getting results with girls, I started getting my first uh, uh, same night lady. I started getting my first girl that wanted to be my girlfriend. I started getting my first number. I'm like, if I put in the work with girls and I can get good with girls, what if I put in the work with fitness and I be, stop being the scrawny, skinny, fat guy and become a little bit shredded? Mm-hmm. So I did it. I went to the gym and I was like, holy shit, it works. If I can go from the broke student to the business guy who's making a, a, a nice living, I guess I'm just gonna put in the work. So that limiting belief that there is nobody that doesn't have it, there's just people who don't want to put in the work, that's insane. You can you can make anything happen. Yo, you wanna make you wanna become a fucking astronaut? Train. You can become an astronaut. Mm-hmm. You wanna become a rock star? Write songs, learn how to play guitar. You wanna become good with girls? Go out there. Over and over again, repetition, repetition, repetition. You can become anything you want. Doesn't matter if you're less gifted than somebody. Hustle always outperforms being gifted. Of course. And again, training and getting the shit done. Okay. Uh, next question. Max, uh, uh, th- this one is it's pretty interesting, I think so. It says, Max, after three years going to ceremonies with shamans from all over the world, doing ayahuasca, peyote, and all strange and awkward stuff, I start thinking to myself, is there any way of doing these kind of transcendental transformations without getting high as fuck and talking with deities and spirits from other dimensions? What is your, your opinion about this? And before you answer this, I think it's pretty interesting because as... I'm a psychotherapist and I work with people and with psychochamanism and I think that actually what you're doing, maybe it quits the hallucination on the part of people like going exercise in the ground, 
but what you get is pretty similar to the results from Chaman. So, what's your opinion about this? Um, I love the phrase "without getting high as fuck." That made me laugh so hard. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience. I do smoke weed right, uh, irregularly around once a month, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I smoke it more often, but I try to keep it around once a month. So I, that's all. I've never done coke. I've never done ayahuasca. I definitely want to try ayahuasca. I definitely want to try coke at some point. <laughs> but I don't have a lot of experience. I think, yo. There's a lot of ways to figure out what it is, mm -hmm. you know. You mentioned Mario Tomic, right, our homeboy. For him, finding happiness, for him finding presence is probably somewhere in the exercise direction. Exercise, dieting, mm -hmm. sharing his love about that. For the guy who asked this question, it's shamanism, getting high as fuck, as he said. <laughs> there's a lot of ways, you know. Uh, there's, a, there's a saying in, in ancient Rome. It says, uh, multiple ways lead to Rome. I don't know the exact translation, but there's a lot of roads. They all lead to Rome. There's a lot of roads. They all lead to wisdom, love, spirituality. At the end of the day, if you enjoy the journey there, it doesn't matter how you got there. Mm -hmm. I hope that works as a also very non, very spectacular question. <laughs> Answer, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so you'll say that the answer is more or less like, if that makes you happy, continue, but you don't have like a yeah. real opinion on the topic? More or Yo, less. ask me five years when I got high as fuck a lot of times with all kinds of different shit. I definitely want to try it. I think it's worth trying in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. But right now, I, I, I couldn't give you an accurate answer because I haven't tried it. Okay, nice. And uh, I think we can... I finish with this <laughs> there, there were some more questions about the Kivalion and about your thinking and I love to continue this interview for three hours but I know that it's pretty uh, like late up there I yeah we can do another one for yeah? sure man yeah I like I love this shit we can do another one next week or some shit oh that would be amazing if we can have another interview soon and hoping my Fuck camera it. to work well the next time Welcome, stay tuned from Mexico to Kiev. So, for now, we can finish right here the interview. I love if you can say, like, Viva la Mandanga, that is like, let's have fun and get laid <laughs> in Spanish. Can you, wait, write it in the chat. Let me try to say it. Okay, okay. Um, Viva la Mandanga. Puta madre, that's all I can say. Puta madre. <laughs> El mundo es nuestro. <laughs> That's from Scarface, isn't it? I don't even know. I saw it on a, at, as graffiti in the town in, 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 in Spain. Viva la mandanga. That's easy. Viva la mandanga. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and with this, we'll finish the interview for today. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. That was epic. And...